Hello, my name is Sherilyn and I'm a music teacher from Malaysia. In this podcast, you will hear me share stories about my teaching career and other stuff that interests me such that I want to share with you. Stay tuned and listen to what's coming next in this episode. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Adventures of a Music Educator. My name is Sherilyn and I'm the host of my own podcast, <laughs> which is pretty obvious already. And yes, I can be quite lame sometimes. So please bear with me as this is only my first episode. And uh, I am still trying to figure out the format of this podcast. Um, I roughly have an idea of what I want to do and hopefully it improves uh, as I get along with the episodes. So in this first episode, um, it will be about me sharing about how I became a music teacher. And truth to be told, being teacher, being a teacher is wasn't my first choice. Uh, after I graduated from my music degree, I studied in this island called Penang Island. It's one of uh, the most popular islands in Malaysia. And it's right uh, north of Kuala Lumpur. So if you haven't been there, you should visit it once this whole corona situation is over. And when it's safe to travel, of course. So I graduated from a public university there. And I found a job very quickly, actually. Just before I graduated, I found a job and... I have to thank my mother a lot for that too because um, finding that job wasn't easy. But she told me that if I want to come home and just teach piano because that was an instrument that I played for a very long time, she she told me why don't I go and try out something new like teaching at an international school. So at that time, back in 2013, yeah, back then, international schools in Malaysia was growing, still growing, and it's getting really big now. And uh, so it was big and then new, very new at that time. So I love Penang Island so much. I really didn't want to leave. So I tried to find jobs at the international schools there. I only managed to get one interview. But it wasn't successful. Probably they think I was too fresh and my asking pay was too high. Well, nobody knows. So I applied to another school there. But that school was really big. And they have several uh, campuses around Malaysia. So I was invited to an interview at their main campus in KL. And that's where I got my job. The boss, or rather the director of the school, told me that there was actually no opening for a music teacher in Penang. But she liked me, I guess. So she claimed and said that uh, she will offer me that spot at the school on the Penang campus. So I... Yeah, I secured a job after just before I graduated and I managed to stay on that island for another three years. So if you don't know already, I studied at the Penang Island for three years and another additional three years with full-time work. So I had full six years on the island. I really enjoyed my time there because it was, it is, okay, not was, it is a very vibrant island. It's um, very cultural and because it's an island, it's small, so it's easy to, you know, get around. I can, you know, go one end to the other very quickly in two hours. It doesn't take a lot of time. If I were to go back to Kuala Lumpur at that time and worked, um, going to cultural places or going to places where I can see performances or be part of performances will be very far. Normally it's an hour's drive and uh, that's not nice. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I became a, a music teacher. Uh, I almost became a piano teacher 
but uh, because of my mother's encouragement, I became a music teacher at an international school. So international schools in Malaysia are privately owned. Some are family uh, established schools, some are corporate established schools. Well, this is to my knowledge at least. So, yeah. And I worked there for three years and then due to personal reasons, I have to come back to KL, come back to my hometown and stayed in the Klang Valley. So I found uh, another international school to work back here. But I wasn't very near home still because Kuala Lumpur is very big. The Klang Valley is really, really big. So I have to still move out to stay near the workplace. But at least I don't have to go crazy over the morning jams, the petrol cost and the toll fees. That cost a lot of money. So it was best to just rent a place near the school and the school was uh, situated is situated sorry is situated in the outskirts of the city so rental over there was re- cheap yeah it's cheap so it was a it was a good move because i had different experiences there when i t- when i taught in that school and then after 5 years of full time teaching in the in a, I mean, at two international schools, I decided that I want to take a break. I I felt like um, I plateaued in my career because I wasn't going anywhere. If I continue to work, the routine is the same. There is no climb. It was very hard to climb. So I decided that I wanted to pursue further studies. And I... Yeah, I registered for a master's degree course uh, at another local university, but it's still near home. It's in Kuala Lumpur as well. And yeah, I took that master's for two years in performing arts, bracket, music. (laughs) Yeah, it's a very general performing arts uh, master's degree, but I specialized in music education because I felt that that was or that is my niche area if i were to be more specific i think um, music education and technology or technology in music education is my thing as you will get to know me more in the coming episodes um you will find that i'm i'm quite a techie yeah for a music teacher i'm quite techie and uh oops so yeah, I did my master's degree and I completed it and I had to graduate in the pandemic year, which was last year. But praise the Lord, <laughs> I also found a full-time job in the same working environment at another school. And it's really near home this time. I didn't have to move out. It was just a 30-minute drive or at the most 40-minute drive It if there is a really bad jam but I kind of like my new school at the moment Um, it's really new I because of this pandemic I really experienced new things Uh, among uh, among those new things is um, working with my colleagues remotely I until today I have not um, really have a circle of new friends among colleagues yet and it's the first time that I also taught my students remotely. Um, so this coming month, April, will be the first time that I see my students in uh, physical class. So I wonder if that will be awkward. <laughs> I guess it would at some point, especially with the teenagers. I have no doubt about that. So coming back to um, how I became a teacher, yeah, so that's the, you know, short summary of it, of how I became a music teacher. And I would, I have to say that I really thank my colleagues in my uh, first school because because of them, I see how um, teachers can teach how teachers can be different in their approach 
methodologies. It's really new because I was not uh, taught in that kind of environment. Because the first school I taught at was uh, is an IB school. Sorry, I keep using past tense. <laughs> but yes, the first school I taught is an IB school. So that was my first exposure to inquiry learning, uh, backward planning, and you know student led learning, teacher facilitator style kind of teaching. It was tough. The first year there was tough, but it got really much easier when I entered my third year because I know the routine, I know the events, I know what we had to do, what documentation to do. But um, trust me, uh, not everyone can do documentation and documentation at IB school is really not a piece of cake. It's really a lot of work, but if you can understand the process of it, I guess it makes sense. So the the learning is a process thing, yeah. Rather than just evaluating students for the knowledge that they have, so I find that very intriguing, and that triggered, a, I would say, a series of you know lifelong learning in me. I think ever since then, I have not stopped learning as a teacher because I have never been in a inquiry classroom for music class personally as as a person as a student, no. But trying to teach in that kind of classroom, that is not a walk in the park. That's definitely definitely not. It was not easy. I can remember the nights I spent trying to create my lesson plans, trying to write my unit planner, doing reflect doing the reflections, writing the reports. Not easy, but I would say those are very good foundational foundational years for me as a teacher because in my music degree there was very little emphasis of of um how to do lesson planning maybe i missed out that part <laughs> who knows i think i might have missed that out yeah that those experiences in the ib school was really good i i, I felt like i have very good training i had a very g supportive group of colleagues over there. They were all very good mentors. They were, you know, very generous, very humble in, in sharing the knowledge. And I really respect how they teach, how they plan, how they could think out of the box when they, you know, carry out those activities with the students. Yeah, I really uh, enjoyed learning there but yeah it was tough <laughs> i have to keep saying that it is not easy you know whoever tells you that teaching is easy has got to be kidding i i want to know why you say it's easy okay i i think teachers who are good teachers and teachers who have the heart for learning i don't think they have it easy but because they they you know get so much satisfaction, they get so much um, enjoyment from seeing the students learn, I think that that keeps them going. That keeps me going too, you know, when I see my students respond positively to my lesson materials. Yeah, I feel that way. I, I don't think you can get that kind of um, sense of joy when you know, you do other things. It's very, very rare, I think. Uh, even playing music doesn't give me that kind of joy sometimes, but really, the ability to teach, that's really something. So, I I really you know, aspire to be those kind of teachers, you know, that, that can do all that. I, I'm still in progress, uh, even though I think I have improved a lot as a teacher, but, you know, learning never stops. You know, um, learning is a lifelong activity. That's something I really believe in. And that's why I start this podcast. Yeah, I, I thought that, you know, maybe creating a podcast will help me um, explore my thoughts, exp uh, reflect on my teaching journey and how I 
could learn from my students even you know how students make me learn sometimes yeah every time i i face a problem in the classroom or in my piano studio i will you know always try to find solutions i don't like giving up too easily it's very rare but if i do it it must be really bad <laughs> i would have to say if i really do give up it's really bad because i'm not known for that so yeah i'm pretty stubborn in that sense <laughs> and oh i forgot i forgot to mention about my piano studio so uh with five years of full-time teaching experience at international schools and counting i just started teaching piano like end of 2019 oh no wait in uh late 2018 to be exact I started teaching piano privately late 2018 because I left my full-time job and I was gonna start my master's so I couldn't just leave on my Pama loan. <laughs> Pama loan is a slang for Papa Mama uh, education loan. Okay, I'm I'm too old to you know ask money from my parents like that. So I have to do the most responsible adult thing which is to find part-time jobs so i learned the piano and studied the piano for so many years so it's time that i teach it and yes i started teaching in 2018 uh, privately at music centers in malaysia we have a lot of music centers and also as a freelance teacher house call teachers so to speak um, as in I go to the student's house and teach the students. Or it could be the other way around, the students coming to the teacher's house. But nowadays, parents are so busy, they rather the teacher you know, go to the student's house. And and we get paid yeah, some petrol money for that. Yeah. So, but I did, I did taught a little bit of piano when I was in Penang, but I didn't like the idea of moonlighting at that time. And also, I was simply too busy. I enjoyed the freedom, the, the space of time that I have after work. Yeah. And the other thing is, teaching piano also requires uh, taking away my weekend time, which I didn't like even until now. <laughs> I don't like that my uh, weekends is spent on working. I think um, work should be on Monday to Fridays or however the structure is supposed to be, I, I feel w we teachers need the break. We really do need the break because um, I think I'm a workaholic. So even during the break, I will, you know, do work, sort of plan lessons, research, you know, the new ways of how I can teach something. Yeah, so that's that can be quite challenging at, actually. So that's the other part of my teaching career and I hope that gives you an idea of what I do. So I teach full-time as a classroom music teacher or general music teacher but at the side I'm currently um, teaching some private piano students and yeah I enjoy the, the, the teaching and learning process so far. So if you have you know, any comments you want to share about my podcast or you think that there are questions or you got topic ideas, you know, feel free to email me at share the music at gmail.com. Share the music as in my name, C H E R, share. Share the music. Yeah, C H E R T H E M U S I C at gmail.com. I would appreciate the feedback because I didn't realize that I'm I'm speaking almost 20 minutes already. <laughs> so um thank you very much if you have uh listened until this moment. So I I look forward to speaking again in the next episode which I will talk a little bit about my experience in invigilating exams virtually. Yeah, I thought that's something interesting to share about. So stay tuned for that. And see you.